So obviously on the bench is an Atari 410 program recorder. This is the remember this is the original or the second version of the 410. Uh, this seems to be the most common one. I did purchase this one because it was in box. Uh, and I, you know it's just nice to have it in box. Uh, it was not tested. I have taken it out and done a quick inspection of it already. See if I can get it to slide out of the packaging. There we go. I, as I recall, it does not fast forward or rewind, uh, meaning it's going to need, I'm pretty sure, belts. Belts being the most common failure on old cassette recorders. Let's see if we can get it out of the box. kind of nice having it in the original box and packaging. Uh, I'd like to get it working. I don't know that I'd ever seriously use it for anything. Although I guess if a cassette based game came my way, well, that, that worked really well. The one cord pulled the other cord through. Then yeah, it would be interesting once or twice to load up a game off cassette. Uh, I've had enough experience in my lifetime pulling games off cassettes with you know in, insane uh, load times but it's not really something I want to experience again uh, you know repeatedly once or twice just to, to play is fun after that it's like no thank you so finally we have the unit here it looks to be in decent shape I heard something rattling inside, but I guess not. See, it looks to be in decent shape. I'm assuming 982 is probably a manufacturing date. Though I don't know that. But that would be my guess. No, there is something loose inside, kind of rattling around. So my understanding, doing a little bit of reading on this, is I should be able to fast forward and rewind without it being plugged into anything. I hear the motor potentially attempting to turn, making absolutely nothing is happening on the little wheels. Play supposedly won't work, okay. It's actually trying to rewind now. Not trying to fast forward at all. My understanding is it won't play until the command from the computer comes to actually play. It requires both the play button to be down, or the record and play for recording, and a command from the computer. Uh, I didn't find a whole lot of videos on YouTube about changing belts. I found a couple that I thought were going to be belt changing videos, but they never actually changed the belts in them. They just said they had. Uh, I don't know if people consider it such a commonplace, easy thing to do. They don't post videos. Uh, but my intent here is to post a video. At least in my experience, hopefully I can actually change the belts. Speaking of belts, I've got the four belts here. Uh, again, from Console 5, I mentioned them in a previous video. Uh, I'm not a sponsor of them. Uh, I'm just, you know, I got the belts from them, and it was very nice to get a package with the four belts in it. Uh, I saw one video that basically implied that the main drive belt, the big one, because it had been on the drive motor for so long it was kinked. And even though it was continuous, that kink in it was enough to cause it to, to, to create enough a flutter on the playback that it, it couldn't actually uh, you know, load a program off a of tape. And that by re just replacing that one belt, the unit was able to work. Uh, it also implied that it wouldn't fast forward or rewind. Okay, that's a broken post. That's why that felt so strange. Actually, it's two broken. No, it's one broken post. And some broken plastic. So this might be in a little bit rougher shape 
than I imagined. It's pretty dirty inside. It's dirtier than I would have guessed it would be inside. So we've got three of the screws out. We've got a little piece of plastic that broke off from some place. And I'm going to go ahead and hold the post here and back the screw out of it. see the horribleness falling out of this all over the bench. I don't know what that all is. Uh, everything is direct soldered. There's no... Oh, that is nasty. I really want to remove the entire thing from the case. There's more broken plastic inside. I will figure out where that's coming from. Okay, this piece is from back here, it looks like. Yeah. That can be repaired. I really think I'm going to remove this completely from the case. We'll start here with the transformer. I almost feel like machine screws or the threaded brass inserts. Potentially for the transformer, it would make for a more secure mounting. Because they certainly don't feel like self-tapping screws, they feel like machine screws as they back out. And they are machine screws. Like I said they certainly felt that way to me. Okay, there's the earth ground, or no, it's just a cable tie, and an earth ground. That's interesting. This is going to be the strain relief for the line cord. And I'm going to go ahead and remove it. <clears throat> oh, that electrical tape is long dead. It's interesting it's using wire nuts. See if I can undo the wire knots. Um, I don't think these are crimped. They don't appear to have been crimped. I may end up cutting these off because I very much frayed the the line cord and the transformer wiring here. The orientation of these shouldn't matter. The transformer creates galvanic isolation. So I think I will go ahead and cut these off. I hate to do that, but I can't get the screws to unwind off. They just tighten the wires in either direction. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm going to remove the line cord. So this is actually turning into a bigger video than I thought it might. So let's see if I can get that to pull through. Wow, is that ever stiff. that it's been twisted for so long. Again, I could potentially cut that part of the cord off. But I don't think I need to. I think I can get it to pull through. I think I can get that to feed through on its own. Mm, 
Oh, I'm, I've actually ripped the insulation here. We're going to go ahead and cut this and we'll rewire it since I've managed to strip the insulation there. So uh, that is what it is. So be it. You may not need to go this far. I am cho choosing to go this far because I want to actually deep clean seeing all the I'm assuming it's insect material inside although I don't know that uh, I don't know what it is I don't know how this was stored I definitely need to get a picture of the wiring beyond this point Gonna release this wire tie, maybe. And second camera. old iPhone camera or an old Apple camera that I've had forever that I use for this kind of stuff just for shooting pictures several angles so it becomes really clear uh, the power is up underneath the board not now Yellows in the blue. And like I say, I've learned over the years multiple angles because often there's one thing you need to see that you can't see. And that's probably from the read right head. I'm going to separate the red and white out a bit because the shield ground is down in between them. There is, there's another shielded cable here, and two brown cables, one to here and one to there, and they are not connected together. Don't know what those are for, but we'll, again, get multiple pictures. Where's that ground going to? Let's see if we can get a picture where it's obvious in the picture. So the transformer and the wire I cut there, I'm very confident I can put that back together. It's no big deal. Uh, it'd be a little more complex trying to reverse engineer this out of the way. Definitely a self-tapper. This looks like it's going to be a machine screw, and it is. There's a brass insert, cut a post down below it, another self-tapper. I was going to say there has to be one more screw here, and there is right here, and it's going to be, this is, it feels like a machine screw. Again, there is a brass insert there. got you so wow that is still really firmly in place the door is completely independent that's normally pinched in place there for the door to rotate at so I understand that work else are you attached the motor so this side of the motor over here is also attached into the top cover if I can get that screw loose I can't believe how solid oh I see wow 
The PCB has got to come off at this point. These also go all the way through. These have, that one has a fiber washer. That makes sense because there's P PCB traces underneath it. I suspect these are all going to be short and the same except for the fiber washer. The fiber washer is to protect the PC board traces over here. And you can see that some of the uh, uh, solder mask has actually been rubbed off there. These posts have a slot in the top because they need to be unscrewed to pull the mechanism out. I'm going to set them aside here and make sure they're all the same length. I would expect them to be, but we're about to find out. Two, there's a third one that the PC board is hiding. Those are all three the same length and identical. I suspect that'll loosen up the mechanism and lift it out. I'm going to set the top aside. Set the PCB aside. So we can see there's a belt here that needs to be replaced. Uh, that belt comes up to a secondary belt here that is for the tape counter. There's a third belt here. There's four belts in the bag. So where's the fourth belt? Right there. Yeah, the fourth belt is going to be interesting to get to if I can get to it. I'm not exactly sure where the fourth belt routes to. It comes potentially off. So for those of you who don't understand a cassette mechanism, haven't been inside of one, there's of course the DC drive motor here. And this is the drive motor that basically drives the entire system. That belt is fairly loose. Uh, the capstan feels really tight. It may need to be lubricated. This belt drives there's a flywheel here that you can see this large metal flywheel. That flywheel becomes this post right here. And so when I spin the flywheel, that post will spin. You probably can't see it, but it does. And what happens is when you are figure out which one of these is record play is over here okay so when play is engaged you see this entire mechanism move forward there's an erase head here which is what the white one is and there's the read head over here uh, and it is a stereo yeah it's a stereo I believe it's a stereo head looking at it but what happens when you play or record is this mechanism slides forward. I don't have a cassette tape to place in here. The cassette tape is sitting in here. The tape is routed through these two little guides here, across the erase head, across the read right head, through that little gap there, and then comes between this pinch roller and that metal shaft there. And so when you're playing, that metal shaft is spinning, and so it's driving the tape. Uh, and the back side, of course, of that metal shaft is this large flywheel. And the, fly, the mass of the flywheel helps keep the, the speed constant driven from the motor. And really from there, fast forward and rewind, etc., are just simply getting other things connected. Two of the belts have to deal with simply the tape counter. There's one here and one that we look at underneath. There's the main belt that will be really easy to get to here. And there is a belt inside here that's going to be tricky to replace. So it'll really become a matter of how far down I dare tear this thing. Uh, I've also got to be careful here, like on the printed circuit board. There's a couple of switches here. 
We don't want to catch those on something and bend them up. There's a mechanical switch sitting in here. We want to be careful we don't mess it up. At this point, I kind of want to sit this down if I can. And I'm going to shoot some more photos. There's a lot of rust pitting on the motor here as well. So whatever environment this was stored in was not the best environment for vintage electronics. Yeah, I know you haven't been backed up forever. Let me just get some a bunch of pictures of the mechanism. Uh, get some of the printed circuit board as best I can. Oh, excuse me. We can see the belt there for the recorder, or for the uh, position number thing. Let's flip this over and get some shots of the back. Oops. I want to get, try to capture all the springs that I can. There is the belt there. There is a belt there that's really hard to see. There's a spring down in there and a spring there. Lots of springs. At this point I need to, uh, yeah, this whatever has come out of this thing is just nasty. I need to clear all the bits and pieces off the bench here. clean everything especially the plastics Ew. I don't know what that stuff is and move forward with belt replacement yuck anyhow I will do that off camera